Star Wars 7x7 episode 3071. Yesterday we were talking about the first wave of novels from phase two of the High Republic mega ginormous storytelling initiative and how they compared to the waves of novels that came out during phase one. Today we're going to talk about connections, in particular the connections between the bad guys in phase one and the bad guys in phase two. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So the Nihil of course were the bad guys in phase one of the High Republic and the path of the open hand has been set up as the main bad organization in phase two. What do these organizations have in common? Well, there are some connections that have already been drawn between the two organizations, and we'll talk about those on today's episode. Because the way they've set things up so far in Phase 2, there is a through line here. There are elements that have to transition in some way or another to get to the Nile in Phase 1 in the timeline. For a start, we have the Gaze Electric. So that's the ship that we see as the main headquarters traversing the galaxy for the Nile in phase one of the High Republic. The Gaze Electric is actually being built by the Path of the Open Hand in phase two, and by the end of Path of Deceit, it has made its journey into the stars, not with all the flourishes and neat little... <laughs> decorative touches, if you will, but it is space-worthy, and by the time things really go bad and sideways in Path of Deceit, they decide, yeah, we got to get off Dalna and start spreading our gospel to the rest of the galaxy, or at least that's how they're putting it. Then we have the Roe family connections. We have Martian Roe or Markian Roe, depending on who you're talking to from Phase 1 of the High Republic, is the leader of the Nile, and we have two Roe family members, Marta Roe and Yana Roe, appearing in Path of Deceit. Or first appearing, I guess I should say, because I believe Yana is going to show up in the High Republic comics, and perhaps Marta will as well. Now, we did an episode that touched on this a while back, but we don't necessarily know the average lifespan of an Evereni, that's the Roe family's species, but if you wanted to assume something akin to a human lifespan, then we would be several generations away from Markeon Roe with Marta and Yana, so that's like great 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 grandmothers potentially or aunts or <laughs> similar relations and by the end of path of deceit those two row cousins have been radicalized in their own particular ways marta has become an ardent follower of the mother the leader of the path of the open hand is more committed to the vision of the force being free than ever before, and certainly more so than she was at the beginning of Path of Deceit. Yana, in the meantime, has realized that the mother has some sort of grift going on, some sort of con game going on, and has also been instrumental in the death of the person that she was deeply in love with, was going back to potentially kill the mother, and yet the way things unfolded, it didn't quite work out that way. So now, by the end of that novel, Yana is looking for an opportunity and working with the Herald, the other part of the leadership of the Path of the Open Hand, to create that opportunity. So Yana is absolutely against the mother, but also trying to make it look like she's not against the mother for the time being. And complicating that whole thing is the leveler. So the leveler, of course, we met to terrifying effect in phase one of the High Republic. The leveler was first responsible for the death of Loden Greatstorm. Now the leveler is responsible for multiple deaths and it looks like it's only gonna be the beginning of those deaths in phase two of the High Republic. And somehow the leveler decides that it is going to pick a champion, somebody who is going to be attached in a special and particular way to the leveler. And Yana Ro is that character because seemingly Yana Ro is the one holding the Rod of Seasons, one of the force artifacts that the children of the Path of the Open Hand were tasked to reacquire. 
And though it wasn't named in phase one of the High Republic, there was some sort of rod, actually two pieces of a rod that were wielded by Marquion Row, which supposedly controlled the leveler. There are three different rods that are referred to in phase one of the High Republic, but it seems like they are not being used to directly control the leveler at this point. Certainly the Rod of Seasons isn't being used as a you know directional thing, but it's just something that the leveler recognizes is in the possession of Yana Ro and it creates some sort of bonding situation for the leveler. This of course also creates a bit of animosity on the mother's behalf, because the mother, I think, would have liked to have been the one that the leveler chose as its champion, and nope, that's not the case. And so, yeah, the mother and Yana both know that they don't like each other, but now they seem to be stuck together. The next connection has to do with knowledge of the planet out beyond the known galaxy where more of these leveler type creatures, which are presumably going to be the nameless, are hiding out. That information is brought to the mother by Sunshine Dobbs. However, Marky on Road talks about how knowledge of that planet was something that was passed down from generation to generation within his family. We don't necessarily know if that goes all the way back to when the Evereni were actually on their home planet, or if we're actually going to see the situation where Marta and Yana, or both of them, or just one of them, are going to get that information, and they are going to be the source of that information passing down through the Ruro family across the generations. So with our knowledge of this connective tissue, what can we say about the Path of the Open Hand and its fate in Phase 2 of the High Republic? I gotta say, the fact that we have not heard from the Path in Phase 1 technically doesn't mean that the path has been wiped off the face of the galaxy by the time phase one happens. We could potentially see the path of the open hand return in phase three, and wouldn't that be something? But there's already been indications that something very bad is going to happen on Dalna, and a massacre of some sort will occur. We know that the leveler actually gets frozen in a block of ice in some random corner of the galaxy, and that the various rods, like the Rod of Seasons and the Rod of Daybreak, are also scattered across the galaxy too. Why the Jedi wouldn't just, you know, bury them in their <laughs> temple archives or something is beyond me. Unless that's because the remaining people who survive, who may be the elders of the path, that may be the path of the open hand that was referred to in the High Republic Adventures comic from Daniel Jose Older in Phase 1, maybe you know, they've just rebranded Branded, and they're the ones that took the rod and the rods and spread them across the galaxy to hopefully have them never used again. Obviously, that didn't work out very well. And as it is, we also found out in Phase 1 of the High Republic that some records related to Dalna have been deleted from the Jedi Temple archives as well, which is pretty suspicious stuff and smacks of the records about Kamino being deleted from the Jedi Temple archives in the prequel trilogy. And maybe, ultimately, the Roe cousins, or at least one of the Roe cousins, will have control of the Gaze Electric, and along with the children of the path who are being sent out to perform nefarious deeds on behalf of the mother, those would seem to be prime candidates for proto nihil type characters. Meanwhile, I imagine that we're going to get more connections to the Nile and Phase 1 when we get to the Battle of Jeddah early next year, and then when we get to Phase 2, Wave 2 of the High Republic with the novels that are be coming out in the spring, including Cataclysm by Lydia Kang as the major adult novel. But I think that pretty much links up everything that we know so far. And if you've got other links between the Path of the Open Hand and the Nile that you've seen in your High Republic reading, then by all means share them either if you're catching this on YouTube in the comments right there or at the blog post for the show's episode at SW7x7.com. Please let me know. I'd love to talk about more of those links if they're out there. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be.
7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.